Oh, good day, friends. Uh, we are here for a longish overdue Denver real estate market review, uh, market update. I've done a few different ones about like specifically interest rates and uh, will prices fall? Will the housing market crash? But um, I just want to look at purely the numbers that are happening in the Denver real estate market right now, which are indicative of locally what's going on nationally, too. Um, because it is, uh, there are big changes happening. And if you're paying attention, you know that. Um, but I wanted to take you through some of the numbers to show you what really is happening, not just on a month to month, but a week by week basis. And, um, to help you out if you are a buyer or a seller or potentially either of those things, by the way, I mentioned this at the beginning of every video. I am a licensed real estate agent in the state of Colorado and I serve the Denver Metro. If you have any needs in that area, I would love to be your go-to resource. So please do reach out. I will put my contact information in the description, probably one of the comments, maybe somewhere else too. You can get a hold of me. Um, I'm here in the new office, by the way. New home office, which you can't see much of, but you can see that there's not much of yet because we just moved in uh, the other night and it's still chaos, but uh, it's going to be cool. Maybe I'll do a... No, I won't. I said maybe I'll do an office tour. Uh, nobody cares. Um, what we care about is the numbers, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get going on this. So who is this lovely lady on my screen? This is Megan Aller. Um, she is an account exec, as you can see, for First American Title, and she is the best. She um, really has carved out a niche of data and keeping us informed at the deepest levels about what's going on in Denver real estate. So she sends out these reports on a weekly basis. They are big, long reports. I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but I am just going to – I've kind of pulled out some of the most pertinent – slides that I, I think, uh, illustrate what's going on. So here's the first one. And let's see if I can finish this. I don't want it to be going off the screen. Jeez. Good God. Resize this. See, see if this will help. Uh, okay. Here's the first one. And yeah, you can see what's going on here. Basically, may, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but this is, um, so this is attached and detached properties for all prices. That's what we're just going to start at. A lot of this data, that's what we're going to look at. This is median days on market for all homes, median days. You can see here in uh, basically from January, let me get my little markup tool. I'm using this new thing here. Yeah. Basically from late December through of last year, through April of this year, uh, median days on market was locked at four, four median days on market, which is insane. But you know how crazy the real estate market was. Basically what that means is everything, almost everything went under contract in the first weekend. And the only reason it was at four is because if you had a listing, you would say, well, we're not going to, you'd go live on Thursday or Friday and you'd say, well, we're not going to accept any offers until Monday at the earliest, because we want to give everybody time to see it over the weekend. And we want to give time for all the offers to come in because that's how you serve your seller the best because the first offer is probably not going to be your best one. So I did it. Everybody did it. Anyway, that's the only reason it was at four. Otherwise it would have been one or two because things were just flying because there was nothing on the market. There were a lot of buyers, which is changing. So the point is now you see the most recent number right here, 16 from four to 16. Yeah. Four times as many median days on the market. So that means that the median home I would say average, but average is a little different. Um, homes are generally staying on for two weeks or longer. And that is causing some price reductions that maybe are a little bit early. Uh, we'll go into that in a little bit. But the point is, I don't know where to look. I'm looking there. I should probably look there. The point is, um, there's a lot more on the market and buyers just have more options. So houses are sitting longer. So for those of us who haven't been doing this that long, um, I've been doing this a few years full time, which you guys know, and a lot of other people too. Uh, this seems odd, even though this is just moving more towards normality, more of a normal market. If we go to slide number two, this is very busy, but really what I just want you to focus on is the, where is that thing? The active uh, or average daily active count, this blue line and see what happened. You'll see average daily active units was way down here um, around a thousand back in January, which is insane. Um, now we are up here over 6,000. So just look what this graph has done. I mean, this is insane. We're up over 6,000. On the right, we have month supply. We'll talk about that in a little bit and why we're still not at a balanced market. 
Um, but that's worth looking at too. You just see, I mean, that line has just shot up. That is an indication of what's happened with the supply. And real estate is, of course, supply and demand, like any other thing in the economic world. Uh, this is odds of selling. This is something that Megan puts together that takes in a whole bunch of different criteria and puts them all in one number and says, this is the odds that your home will sell within the first weekend. Um, this is or within the first week, this is very uh, busy graph too because there's so much data in it, but you can see it peaked up here at like 87% in February, March. We're down here to 51 to 54% is the most recent data. So that's actually still a lot. Uh, you know, you have about a 50 or over 50% chance that your house will sell right away. That's actually still pretty crazy. But in terms of a virtual guarantee that was going on just months ago, things have changed quite a bit. Um, this is showings. I love this. This is average showings per listing, which is the blue line we're going to be looking at showings per listing. Right now we are down at 2.4 in the first weekend or in the first week, 2.4 showings per listing versus 25 at the height, 25 versus two fewer buyers out more options, big, big difference. That's why houses are staying in the market longer. That's why you're able to get more of a deal or at least not have to go over ask price a lot of the time if you are a buyer. Um, this is price reduction. So this is something I hit on before. Price reductions for pending transactions. This is interesting. How many of the homes that go under contract had a price reduction, especially a price decrease? You'll see right now we're at 46%. Um, almost, yeah, 46%. So almost half of all the homes that have gone under contract had a price reduction few things going on here. Um, number one, it's that that's just a tactic you use to get your home sold if it's not selling. And if you're not getting showings, right, reduce the price and get more interest. But 46%, this is, that's extremely high. And it, I think in my opinion, this is one of the only times I'll use an opinion when, when discussing the data here, but this is happening too fast. And it's because of panicked sellers and panicked real estate agents because they don't know any better. All they know is a world where everything sells immediately and sells for over asking price. And if that's not happening, they're freaking out and dropping the price uh, prematurely. They're dropping the price maybe after a week on market. When, because there are a few fewer buyers out there, there's a certain number of buyers you need to get through your home to get that offer, right? There's you just a certain number of people who need to see it. Well, before that was all happening in the first weekend. Now it's not. Now it's spacing out longer. So it may take two, three, four weeks, even if your home is priced properly to get those requisite number of buyers through there to get your offer to go under contract to sell your home. But since that's taken longer, people are panicking because of what they're used to and dropping the price. I believe in some cases too soon, not in all cases. Sometimes a price reduction makes sense. It's a good strategy if you want to sell the home quickly. I mean, what's your goal? If it's, I need to sell immediately, well, then let's go ham on price. Um, so, so this is, we're going into detached properties now cause it's, gets broken down A detached is the, you know, the general single family home. Um, this is basically active units compared to the historic baseline. So the historic baseline is the average between 2013 and 2021. Okay. Before things got really wonky, but, um, and the blue line is 2022. So you've seen, we were down at really my face is in the way, but it was about a thousand in January. Um, we're all the way up over just over 5,000 active units now. Now, now that is still short of, but the 5,500 that would be typical for the last seven, eight years, but it's come up quite a bit. So still not where we're used to being, but getting much, much closer. And then, um, I should move me here. Let me see this. Okay. Month supply. I touched on this before. So and you can see on the bottom, it says uh, a market imbalance would move me again. Uh, a balanced market would be closer to six months of supply. That's a general good rule of thumb that six months of supply is a balanced market. Again, I and a lot of other people don't really know what a balanced market feels like because haven't been there because things have been crazy for so long. But you'll see, um, basically, we're still way off. I just lost power but we're still rolling. So we'll see if this works. Sorry about the, they're doing construction outside. Uh, bear with me. 
um, you'll, you'll see basically that we're still a ways off a balanced market, especially in these more competitive price ranges. Even going up to the 1.5 to 2 million, 2 million to 3 million, we're looking at two and a half months of supply. That's way off the six months for balance. And if you go down to the four to 600 range, we're at one and a half months. So if you have a listing or you're selling your home that's coming up, that's going to be under $600,000, you can expect to have more interest and probably sell that home faster than that median days on market of 16 days. And maybe a lot, depending on how well it's presented by your agent and how aggressively you price it. And then it goes even lower for the two to $400,000. I mean, if you got a detached home in that price range in Denver, go for it. You're, you're going to sell that thing very soon. Now, once we get towards these high price ranges, obviously you're seeing basically a balanced market in four to 5 million and 5 million, it's unbalanced in, in favor of, of buyers, but you know, 5 million plus it's just really just insane people who are buying those kind of houses. So that's its own thing. And then, um, this is the last slide I have, and this is just another illustration of that. Basically, this shows the active units we have right now in black versus the number of active units that would be required for a balanced market. And that's in red. So if we go down here to all prices, this is our active units, just over 5,000. And visually, this shows you still how far off we are from a buyer's market because we would need just over 17,000 for balance. Still a seller's market, still a great market to sell your home in a great time, but you need to be smart where in the last few years, you haven't had to be smart. You could just kind of do whatever and it would sell and you'd probably get a good deal. Um, but if you're a buyer, there's opportunity too because look at the number of price reductions. Almost half the homes on the market have a price reduction. What does that mean? It means you don't have to offer over asking price. Generally, you can wait for a price reduction or if it's a place you love that's priced well, you can just come in and offer asking and you're going to have a really good chance as long as your agent's on the ball. Now, um, just looking at these different uh, price ranges too. Yeah, you're seeing the, the, I mean, you can see visually here up to $800,000, just still a huge imbalance. That was a terrible circle. Sorry, I'm still learning this software. And up here, you know, we're getting in, in the luxury, luxury or Uber luxury range. Um, it's like a balanced market basically, but that's a completely different thing. And that's why real estate is, you can't just look at, here's what's going on nationally with real estate because it depends on, it's hyper-local. So it depends on what's going on locally, number one. And number two, it depends on the price range big time. Because even when things were nuts, I mean, you weren't selling a three and a half million dollar property in the first weekend, probably. Maybe you did, but probably not. Um, you may sell a one and a half million dollar property in the first weekend. Um, I was involved in one of those. So, but look, look at that, one to one and a half, still, still big imbalance. Um, Moral of the story is you got to have a plan tailored to you um, to make sure you're being successful and make sure you're not freaking out um, if things don't go as planned because you should, if you're looking at the data, which we are now, um, have a good idea of what to expect going into it based on your home, its price range, its location, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, that's it. I'm glad this is still recording. Um, sorry we lost power, but uh, yeah, glad you're here. Like I said, I'm around if you guys need me. Um, love making these videos, but really love getting phone calls and emails from you guys even more. That's what I'm here for. That's what I do. So um, until next time, I want to thank you for being around. Let me know if this was helpful and I'll talk to you soon.